Well, I think the calendar has turned here into the month of July, and the market is now not pricing based on inflation. The market is now pricing based on an expected recession. And Frank, I think that's clearly obvious. Um, we'll talk about the strategy here in a little bit because there's some good signs in what we're seeing. But specifically towards commodity, you have in commodities disinflationary pricing, the price of oil below $100. Copper down 4% at a 17-month low. It expands beyond that. It's lumber. It's agriculture. It's soft commodities. So the commodity story is a weak one. And then in addition to that, when you're looking at the Treasury market, people continue to try and identify yield curve inversion that correlates with an impending recession. Historically, if you go back to 2000, 2007, and 2019, it was an inversion in the two-year to the five-year, which was able to predict for markets a recession that was to follow. And we've got, in each of those instances, when the two to five was flashing inversion, you had that recession that followed. Well, guess what, Frank? Today, you had the inversion in the two to five-year for the very first time. I think it's obvious to us that the recession conversation shouldn't be about one in 2023. It should be about one in 2022. And in fact, if we're not technically in one right now. All right. Just a note, uh, Joe did not confirm or deny his trip to Ibiza. John, I saw you give the thumbs up. Um, are you concerned about a recession? Are you seeing data points that are leading you to believe a recession is on the way? Obviously, we're seeing a lot of notes about recession, no recession, people lowering their S&P price target. What are you seeing right now? Um, absolutely, Frank, and I have said for weeks I thought it was 70-30 that we're um, in a recession right now. Right now we're in a recession, I believe. Um, Europe is basically, you know, the lights are flashing in Europe, Frank, that we are in a recession in Europe. Um, I think it's likely we are in one here. Um, to Joe's point, though, I'm not all gloom and doom. Um, there are possibilities out there that the Fed will not continue to just slam interest rates higher. Now, they misjudged inflation, and we could talk about that ad nauseum. We There'll could. be textbooks written about it. And not, ju not just the Fed, of course, Congress and the president. But um, it is what it is. got to trade the market that you've got. Um, if we indeed do not um, tip too hard into that recession, it could be a light recession. Um, and that's what the 10 year is telling you, Frank. But clearly, Europe and uh, the commodities that Joe cited, crude oil, nat gas, they are all telling you the demand is going to be down because of a recession. Um, like I say, I say 70 30, and the odds have moved up. Maybe it's 80 20 that we're already yes. in that recession, Frank. And hopefully, the Fed reading those tea leaves is going to be backing off on 75 basis point jumps forever. Um, if they don't, then it'll be a hard recession, Frank. So, Brent, over to you. Uh, John seeing some flashing lights. A lot of people seeing that dollar euro parity is one of those flashing lights. Falling oil prices, perhaps, is another flashing light. What are you seeing? What are you looking at today, especially when you look at the market? I think between the 10 year coming down, you know, June 14th, it was 349 coming down to, to, to 280 so quickly. And then the Atlanta Fed, their GDP now cast came out last week. It was negative one. And then it came out the next day because there was another reading. They're looking for Q2 GDP at negative 2 percent. So if that actually came to fruition, that would be a technical recession. I do think, though, that investors need to understand that not all recessions are created equal, even remotely. There's nothing in common between the 2007 to 2009 recession and then the really shallow recession we had in the very early 90s. And so I think that the Fed, if they're looking at what the Atlanta, GD, the Atlanta Fed is looking at, I think that they'll definitely, maybe they'll continue to jawbone the market about they're going to be on inflation. But I think after this next Fed meeting, I really think the narrative is going to switch that they're potentially going to be pausing. Because to John's point, Europe is definitely, if, someone, if some country is going to go into a recession, it's going to be Europe just because they have no leverage to pull when it comes to fossil fuels and natural gas. We do here in the U.S. And so I definitely will continue to watch what the Atlanta Fed said. All of the readings are coming out lighter. But I do think, though, this month, 
we will have much more clarity at the end of this month than today, because not only do we have earnings season happen in a couple weeks, Biden's going to the Middle East on the 13th. We're going to get another probably Fed rate hike. But I do think this earnings seasons over the next month is going to be really important and will give the market much more clarity about where corporate, you know, the CEOs and CFOs are projecting for their own balance sheet.